Yes, Your Honor. All right, so is Mr. Sprinkle out there ready? He, he said that he needed 10 minutes from the time that I reached him, so. Tell him, text him now and tell him he needs to get over here right now. He is, Your Honor. He is coming. He text literally. Text him anyway and say the 10 minutes, he can't have any more time. He needs to stop what he's doing right now and come on. Because we have the jury waiting. Yes, Your Honor. Kill over a bitch, but let a rat keep his wife. Produced or obtained after seeing this post. This post can't suffice to prove that that is Justin Cobb's number. This post only explains why DDA Sprinkle got the number and why it was significant to him in this investigation, where his steps and actions are being questioned. But you know, Judge, we, we don't we don't get there. I, I, I hear what the state's saying, and it's disingenuous because we don't get to the second step that they're talking about, what records he procured and why he did what he did, unless we go through the hearsay statement that's contained in the portion that I objected to. And, and the, court is, the court is accurate. I, I was there and I asked for everything that was on the right side, all of the verb is to be, I said that that was hearsay. The state said it was not. It clearly is because to ask him that specific question, I mean, listen, none, none of us are, are um, or obtuse. I ask, here. It, 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 it is. It is what it is. Um, I think that the state was disingenuous about it. The state's being very slippery in regards to their response to the court's questions. I think it's willful, and I think um, a mistrial is appropriate. And I'm asking. I mean, I can't one. figure out what it is. If it's disingenuous, if it is that, I mean, I don't. I don't want to malign the prosecutor standing in front of me right now. So I'm not gonna say the possible things that it could be, but it is baffling to me that somebody with the number of years of experience that you have, time after time after time, continues to seemingly purposefully hide the ball to the extent you possibly can for as long as you possibly can. And I really don't want to believe that it is purposeful, but honestly, after a certain number of times, you start to wonder how it could be anything but that, unless it is just that you are so unorganized that you are throwing this case together as you try it. And I am sorry to say that. But this case is being made much more difficult for everybody because of the haphazard way in which it is being presented. I'm, I'm going to take a recess for a few minutes. I'll have a ruling when I get back. Now, I'm going to be fair. All right, I'm going to deny the motion for mistrial. It's not as if uh, the state couldn't have gotten the testimony in an appropriate way anyway. It's not like the testimony itself is that big of a deal. Um, but I am going to, um, I'm going to exclude that statement uh, and just tell the jury to disregard the statement and any testimony that had anything to do with the statement. So let's get Mr. Sprinkle back. Did you want to put anything on the record or are you just getting ready for the jury? I'd like to put just a matter Go before ahead. the record for the court. All right. Your Honor, um, this is from United States versus Roberts, R-O-B-E-R-T-S. It's 640F2255. It's the Ninth Circuit, um, 1981. It's been cited many times. It specifically says that continued prosecutorial misconduct may show a course of conduct establishing the intent to provoke a mistrial and bring into play double, double jeopardy considerations. You have not been here the whole time, and we thank you for being here. But starting with opening statement, and, and I know I, you got my motion. I know, and I know, I know what your argument is. Um, it, Here's the thing is that, and, and I understand what that law says as well. 
Ms. Love does not appear to be trying to get a mistrial so that she can try this case over again, which I know if that were what she was doing, she wouldn't be able to try the case over again anyway. Um, that, so that's just not applicable here. Um, now, is, is there continued prosecutorial misconduct grant um, merits a mistrial anyway based on that? Yes, potentially we get to that point at some point. But the, there is not, from what the court's vantage point is, an indication that the state is trying to goad anybody into moving for a mistrial so that they can retry the case because they think they're losing the case. I think they think they're winning the case. Well, I don't know. I don't know what they think, but I will say this. This is not becoming in the state of Georgia of a trial. And it is all the time a trial. It is all the time. At some point, it's got to end. Because this is not fair to Mr. Williams, and I assume the other people on trial will agree. It is this constant hiding law, citing law that is, does not stand for what it stands for, not giving over information, not answering the court, arguing with the court, and I think that it does rise to a level now, but I understand what you rule. But I think that we're well beyond it. And the reason I said from all these things. Oh, I saw that. I know. Um, <clears throat> I mean, I, I think my frustration was apparent a few minutes ago. Um, but I, I truly am struggling with whether all of this is purposeful or this is just really poor luring on the part of members of the state's team. Um, either way, it's really unfortunate. If it's something other than poor luring, then it is more than unfortunate. Um, but at this point, and I, I'm, we're, we're gonna just move on um, with that exhibit being excluded. I don't know if I can stress any more than I already have um, how much the state's 